perfect. All right. So before I start, I want to clarify that I actually used the template that was provided. But if you open the master file, they actually allows you to choose the title slides, which is what I did here. So that goes to prove that even if you um, go with the standards, or actually that uh, um, even through standards, so you can achieve some differentiation in your product. All right. So. Um, for uh, this final talk of the day, we are going to be focusing on uh, parasitic instructions and an, a standardization effort in parasitic instruction parameters. And uh, to borrow the framework of uh, Jeffrey Moore, how do we cross the chasm between uh, the early adopters and the early majority? Because we never want the standards to be just standards on paper. We want really the engineers on the trenches to go and use it on their everyday work. All right, so the industry body behind this effort is a group, a working group called OPEX. It stands for Open Parasitic Instruction, and is a working group within the DFM coalition of SI2. SI2 doesn't need an introduction, but in any case, uh, the definition is at the very bottom of the page is uh, um, a consortium of uh, semiconductor companies coming from different corners of uh, the industry and uh, working together for uh, uh, the acceleration of uh, today's complex uh, uh, ICs. Uh, during the presentation, I will start by introducing the problem, uh, present the solution, and then uh, uh, highlight some of the adoption benefits. Um, just to put some more color behind who's behind this effort, uh, the usual logo slides. So you see at, uh, your, at the left side of the slides, all the vendors, the EDA vendors are on board. We are really thankful to them for uh, the collaboration as well as the technical donation that they have done to the working group. And on the right side of the slides, you see you can recognize big names in, uh, um, in the IDM words, IDM slash founderies, as well as a, a couple of pure founderies, um, as well as a couple of uh, uh, fabulous companies. And definitely we, won't, we would want more companies to join the effort because the more we are, the better product we end up with. So uh, parasitic instructions. Um, parasitic instructions parameters describe the technology itself. Uh, they really describe the geometrical as well as the physical uh, um, properties of all the layers that are integrated in any specific technology node. And uh, um, the information is stored using a, uh, a technology file that is read by instruction tools that uh, provides uh, a way to analyze the impact of parasitics into your design. So it is an important component of the physical implementation of all we have been discussing through the day. And uh, um, we have been uh, paying attention to parasitics for now quite a long time. And the area where part of the problem lies in achieving a standardization in the parameters. Because uh, we started to pay attention to parasitics back in the days when there were more people, more companies developing their own uh, technology and therefore their own way to describe their own technology, which in other words means more standards uh, uh, were present, a more way to call the same thing, so more parameters uh, actually pointing to the same quantity existed. Now, the consolidation of the industry definitely has brought some implosion into the number of uh, standard, uh, of uh, formats and parameters, but still there are quite a few uh, present today. Definitely all the EDM comp EDA companies have their own. Definitely all the major companies, uh, founders have their own. And uh, that creates a problem uh, we see or we believe. And I've been trying to summarize the problems on uh, the right side of the slides. It's a problem for all the constituents of this industry. Uh, it's a problem for the founders because before releasing any PDK, they will have to QA the same information for all the vendors. It's a problem on the flip side for the ADA vendors because they will have to convert information from all these founders, uh, which is uh, described in different ways uh, 
into the same, back into the same tool. So definitely seems a waste of uh, resources. And uh, when it comes to IP providers, the big one, they will have uh, to provide uh, uh, the information for all the possible combination of EDA tools as well as foundries. So you can see the explosion of work that uh, goes into uh, you know, uh, extracting the, uh, the, the, the parasitics when uh, um, there, we, there, there wouldn't be such an effort if we were to achieve some standardization there. So um, OPEX has uh, tackled the problem and uh, we have uh, um, came, uh, we came up with a solution that we believe is somewhat unique. Um, we did not uh, we ended up not developing yet another format because we have just finished and say we have way too many already. So we decided instead to create uh, um, a common database, which is a superset of all the existing parameters. And these slides, this uh, graph, try to describe how it's supposed to work or how um, it's actually working. Um, so we have, uh, uh, we are reading in, so our inputs are all the existing formats that have been donated to the working group so far. I wish I had um, um, a laser pointer, but uh, I'll try to point it to you. Uh, so you will recognize uh, the formats for all the major vendors at uh, your lab. So we uh, read in all these formats and uh, we store the information into our database. We pass that information, we store it into the database, which is an SQLite database. And uh, we keep all the information down to the comments, which are uh, oftentimes very, very interesting. And then uh, through some API, we can uh, parse out that information to um, either the usual uh, uh, scripting languages, and you see them listed here on, uh, on this side of the slides, or back to the original uh, format, if you so wish to do. And actually, we have done uh, the, round, uh, the round trip just to prove uh, that through this exercise, uh, we do not lose any information at all. Um, we have, uh, so it's a proven solution. Uh, we can say that uh, we can test that it's very robust and uh, very flexible. Now, um, the work started uh, roughly three, three, four years ago, and that was uh, at the onset of 28 nanometer technology. Um, we um, have it uh, uh, developed for 28 and back compatible to 45 and 65. Since that, or that original work, we have added also the double patterning that came from 20 uh, nanometer, as well as all the new parameters that are needed for, uh, for FinFET, as well as for 3D SOC. So anything uh, you would need uh, to uh, manufacture a product, a chip, uh, t let's say tomorrow, is already uh, included in this database. So it's definitely um, up to speed and uh, updated. We have, as a next step for, uh, for, uh, for this work, we have that of, uh, um, as I mentioned before, if I can go back, no, oops, how do I, oh, yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, the database at the moment is an XQLite database. We want to add also one in XLM, and I will get to the reason at the very end of uh, this presentation. Before I move on too far, I want to point out that uh, um, adhering to standard that doesn't mean uh, open information. We do recognize the need that company have to protect their own proprietary information for whatever reason, and so therefore, in our framework, we have put in place provision to protect the information. So there are several level of security that could be inserted in, in this framework, and they are available to the companies that chose this, uh, to adhere to this, uh, to this standard. So um, we believe that uh, this provision definitely should, uh, um, you know, make you consider the adhering to the standard even more. All right, so um, we have uh, this uh, uh, framework already been in place in a few companies, our early adopters, and we asked them what has been the advantage that they have observed. And here are some of the answers of our survey. Um, I'll probably point out just a couple of them. 
First of all, uh, this is, after all, a, a database. Uh, it's an SQLite database that is very, very simple to query. Uh, we are all used to SQL databases. I mean, all the apps in your smartphones are based on an SQL database. And there's lots of software out there, even open source software that you can use. And so that fact on its own allows the um, users, especially designers, or uh, who goes and uh, characterize a technology to very quickly uh, go and uh, see what are the dependencies between a parasitic, a given parasitic effect, and a given choice on, of uh, circuits design. So it's very easy to uh, highlight and graph dependencies. Also, uh, because it reads so many formats, is uh, another possible application um, is definitely that of uh, comparing tools. Uh, oftentimes, especially the big companies have their own tool inside. So this one, this database can be a, an easy way to um, go and compare tools, as well as if you are thinking about second source manufacturing, also comparing uh, different PDKs. So uh, lots of uh, additional application besides uh, the usual uh, parasitic extraction. So definitely going back to the original problem, we see uh, benefits from adopting it uh, from all the corners, especially for uh, fabless companies. Um, I'm pointing the fabless companies in particular because they, ha ha they are at the receiving end of uh, the food chain. So the they see the compounded pains of uh, all that's come before them. And so, um, and that, to that I can attest by personal experience, oftentimes if uh, a fabulous company is really at the cutting edge of a technology, they are designing their IP, they are designing their libraries and their memories and their service and whatnot as the founder is developing the technology. And they are already working with you know, all the revision of the PDK as they get released. And oftentimes their work is stopped because the founder is QAing the PDK for a format that they are not even interested in. So we see, found, we see that as founders, as more founders and fabulous companies will adhere to these new standards, uh, the all PDK release can be speed up and everyone will, uh, will benefit from it. And also uh, it will be way easier to um, integrate IPs that is being characterized with different tools and therefore in different, uh, in different format. Uh, in, uh, in the same SOC. So um, everything in the end will be a less um, error prone. So uh, going back to the title and the reason why I chose it. Um, we see these standards and that is uh, not uncommon to um, many other standards. We see that oftentimes standards, they, um, they are uh, uh, um, adopted very quickly from the early adopters, but then uh, the effort sits there because there's really a gap between early adopters and uh, the early majority. And so um, in putting together these slides, I asked myself uh, what can help speeding up the adoption of those standards? So how we can bring these nice and neat ideas really into the trenches and on the desk of uh, uh, every um, designer. And so to that, I went back to um, the work that uh, Jeffrey Moore presented to this industry. Definitely there are great ideas in all his book, and especially on actually the second one, uh, the Inside the Tornado, um, I came up with an idea that is, uh, of course, is not my idea, but could be one possible solution. What uh, Jeffrey Mora identified, and rightly so, is that uh, um, a new product, uh, um, of course, he was speaking about products. We are speaking about standards here, but uh, is uh, uh, the same uh, um, platform can be applied, or the same uh, process can be applied. Uh, what usually speeds up the adoption is uh, having uh, an entire platform uh, available uh, to the new product. And what I mean by that, or actually the, the, that idea can be explained with the analogy of public transportation. If you think about public transportation, um, it makes sense from the macroscopic point of view. It helps the environment and whatnot. And everyone would uh, 
would definitely go for it if it were to be um, available enough and flexible enough that no one would be limited by uh, deciding to go with public transportation. So it is really uh, the ubiquity of uh, that solution that speed up adoption. And so with that idea in mind, SI2 has uh, um, came up with uh, uh, the idea of developing a database. And now we are going back to what we were discussing after lunch. One of the recognized problems was the missing database that unifies the information that, that is needed at all different levels of the IC design. So uh, we came up with the idea of developing an even bigger database. And that is the work of another working group that is called the OPS. I'm reading here with you. OPS is uh, um, the standardization format for exchanging all data needed uh, to generate a complex PDK. So that information, that database uh, will contain uh, um, everything starting from uh, your, uh, that is uh, already described in your design manual. And then uh, through the right parts, uh, you will get to your, uh, you know, DRC, LBS, uh, uh, the library information, and text. So the parasitic instruction is just one of them. Uh, but the idea is really to come up with this comprehensive database that has all the same information all in the same format. And that we believe uh, will speed up, uh, uh, will speed up uh, adoption. And with that, I thank you for your att attention and I leave you with this uh, cartoon that I found on the web uh, that uh, describes the new product of standard adoption. Thank you much. This database, would it have any impact on, on the performance of certain tools? Because someone who is developing the tool may do it more efficiently than common database. Can, can, you, can, can you comment on this? Would it affect? Well, the comment I have is uh, we have uh, the EDI vendors all on board. And so um, any tool development. So of course, the short answer is no, we don't want the database to get in the way of uh, speeding up the work and not only developing the tool, as you mentioned, but also using the tool. So we don't want it to present, to, uh, to get into the way. Um, that is the goal. Uh, for what we have implemented so far, we don't really see um, any impact on, uh, on the performance, um, but uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that the more it gets used, the more uh, um, possible problems will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will come up. Uh, but definitely the goal is now. Okay, thank you. <laughs>